All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Um, today we are talking about our new access point, the WAX 630S, or just WAX 630S to make it a little bit easier to say. Um, should be a fairly short presentation today. I'm not going through, you know, a lot of the features and things like that because you know all of our Zycel business access points essentially have the same software feature sets. So we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, as we go through, feel free to ask questions, send them in using the question and answer interface in Zoom. Um, depending on the question, I will answer it as we go or I will hold off on it and answer it when we get to the end today. Okay, so the new model is the WAX 630S. Um, product here is a Wi-Fi 6 business class access point. It supports four spatial streams on the 5 gigahertz radio, two spatial streams on the 2.4 gigahertz radio, making this an AX3000 class device. Um, it has a 2.5 gig uplink port just to make sure that you have enough bandwidth on your ethernet connection to be able to support the bandwidth that Wi-Fi 6 supports. Um, it has smart antenna built in and it is Nebula Flex Pro. So Nebula Flex Pro means it can be managed directly as a standalone device. It can be managed with one of our wireless LAN controllers, including the controller that's built in on most of our security products. Or it can be managed in the Nebula Cloud, which is our free um, cloud network management solution. Um, and it comes with one year of our optional pro pack license bundled to the unit. So if you are setting up and using Nebula and using the optional pro mode, um, the license is included for that. So this product here has been designed to replace the WAC 6303 D-S. Um, so those of you that have been coming to a bunch of our webinars, probably talking to your salesperson, are probably aware the WAC 6303 D-S is going away at some point this year, sooner rather than later. And one of the challenges we've had is, um, as we're phasing out these older 11AC products, is there was no Wi-Fi 6 solution that targets the same space. And this is one of our most popular um, 11AC access points. Um, our only option, if you wanted smart antenna, was to go up to the WAC 650S, which is really kind of expensive. Um, you know, it was nearly double the price of the WAC 6303 DSS. So the WAX 630S is our targeted replacement for the old 6303 DSS. Um, price wise, um, it's about a $30 price difference, but it's a big step up in technology. So from the five gigahertz radio, we're upgrading that to Wi Fi 6. Um, going from the 2.4 gigahertz radio, we're going from Wi-Fi 4, aka 11N, to a true Wi-Fi 6, 2.4 gigahertz radio. So a big step up there in technology for your 2.4 customers. As you can see, we've uh, increased the number of spatial streams supported on the 5 gigahertz radio. So um, the WAC 630S supports four uh, spatial streams versus three spatial streams on the older WAC 6303 D-S. Um, another improvement here is that uplink port on the WAC 6303 D-S. It's a one gig ethernet connection, whereas on the 630S, it's 2.5 gig to support those faster Wi-Fi 6 speeds. Um, PoE consumption is a little bit higher, but they're pretty close to each other. Um, and then on the security side of things, the 630S supports um, WPA3. Okay, so Martin just sent in a question via chat, and it was one I, maybe he didn't hear me here, or maybe I wasn't clear, but the 630S is Nebula Flex Pro, so it's standalone mode, or can be used, managed by a, by a controller, including that controller that's built in on our security products, so that includes the ATP and the USG Flex, um, and it can also be used in the Nebula Cloud. So going on here, um, one of the questions here that, um, you may have by looking at these stats and go, these stats seem familiar. Doesn't this new product here, um, isn't that just this WAX 610D? And the answer to that is yes, it's essentially the same hardware as our WAX 610D, which has been around for a while, but we've upgraded it by adding smart antenna technology to it. So similar smart antenna technology to what was in the 6303 and what's currently in the 650S. 
Um, you can see here the form factor looks exactly the same as the 610. I believe it's a little bit thicker to accommodate those uh, smart antennas. And as you can see, in addition to being powered by PoE, we do have a, uh, the ability to also power it by an, uh, uh, an outlet, a power outlet. We do sell those uh, power adapters. I think they're like $15. So if for some reason you don't want to use PoE to power this, you can always power this with an AC outlet. Um, probably the most common scenario where that comes into effect is for those of you that are taking advantage of one of our mesh technologies, either the uh, Nebula mesh or the... Uh, controller mesh, which allows you to have APs um, that don't have a physical wired connection, but instead create a wireless mesh with other APs until they reach an AP that does have that physical connection. So if you've got one of those situations where you want to extend out your Wi-Fi coverage, um, but for whatever reason you can't or don't want to run um, Ethernet to the AP, um, that's supported there. And in that case, you would use that uh, DC power jack to provide power from a nearby power outlet. So on the design side of things, you know, it follows the standard Zycel business access point design philosophy. Um, so these things have been built essentially like a tank designed to survive a long time, um, which is why they come with a lifetime warranty. So we only use solid state capacitors. There are no electrolytic capacitors, which can um, fail um, much easier than a solid state one can fail. Um, another very common cause of failure on solid state products like this is heat fatigue caused by heat buildup inside the access point. Um, it can cause the little switches in your ICs to fail. It can cause solder joints to fail, et cetera. So you'll see we've got a large metal heat sink here in the back behind the board to help remove heat from the PCBA and its components and a lot of vent holes here on the top. You look at some of our competitors, not only do they not have any sort of heat sink to pull heat off the board, some of them don't have any um, vent holes at all, so they can market their product as indoor outdoor. Um, and then of course, you'll see we've got tons of shielding on the PCBA. Um, not only are we dealing with electromagnetic interference, but we're also trying to filter out nearby 4G and 5G signals. So if you're in a larger office building where they are using some sort of DOS system to rebroadcast or bring Wi-Fi, uh, or excuse me, bring 4G or 5G signals into the building, um, that can cause interference with Wi-Fi APs due to them being on nearby channels. Um, so that shielding helps protect from that. And then, of course, we've got another noise spreader that's mounted above the PCBA. And then our antennas are then on their own board above that, rather, like, rather than most of our competition, including some of our more expensive competition, which mounts the antennas directly onto the same PCBA as the chips. So I want to compare this to the WAC 650S. This is the model that we've been selling. This was our first Wi-Fi 6AP and continues to be our flagship Wi-Fi 6AP. Um, so let's talk a little bit here about the differences. So the 650S versus the 630S, both of them are using Wi-Fi 6 on both radios. Both of them support four spatial streams on the five gigahertz radio. The 650S upgrades the 2.4 gig radio to a four to four spatial streams versus two on the new 630S. You have a faster uplink because you've got faster speeds. The WAC 650S has a five gig uplink port versus a 2.5 gig on the 630S. Um, the WAC 650S, whoops, I forgot to change the title. So ignore the title on there, my bad. Um, uh, some of the other differences here that aren't in that comparison are the WAC 650S has a built-in Bluetooth low energy radio for those of you do, using those, which is a very, very small portion of you. And then there is also a third radio in the 650S that is just there for monitoring five gigahertz DFS channels to make it quicker and more streamlined if for some reason you're using DFS and due to uh, nearby legacy device utilization, you have to stop using your current channel. It allows you to more quickly um, change channels. And of course, this faster ethernet, faster um, Wi-Fi also comes with a big hit as far as your PoE budget. You cannot use your standard 802.3 AT PoE devices to power it. You must use a 802.3 BT PoE device um, because it requires more than 30 watts of power. Um, to be able to fully power the WAC 650S. 
So that'll be it as far as comparing those two together. Um, and then this uses our standard Zycel mounting bracket. So this is a mounting bracket that's been designed for ceiling mount, wall mount. It's been designed so the screw holes match up with a round junction box or can also match up with your typical rectangular US outlet boxes. And then we do sell um, drop ceiling clips that allow you to mount the AP directly onto the T-bar, which holds up your drop ceiling. So you don't have to worry um, about drilling holes in the drop ceiling in order to be able to mount the AP to a drop ceiling. Little animation there for you. Um, so that's really it as far as talking about the WAC 630S. I am going to talk a little bit here about Smart Antenna for those of you that may not be familiar with it. Um, for some of you, I'm sure you, you've heard it a million times already. Um, so this product, the big difference um, with this is it's using our Smart Antenna technology. So Smart Antenna technology has been designed to um, help in two ways. One is it allows it to adapt the signal to where the individual user is. So it can adjust the signal um, to focus in on where that user is. So you're getting a stronger signal sent to each of your wireless clients. Um, and the other big benefit of Smart Antenna is the ability to avoid co-channel interference. So our algorithm has been tweaked so that not only is it looking at where the client device is in relationship to the AP, it also looks at where other sources of RF interference may be coming from, whether it be industrial equipment, microwaves, or other access points um, using the same or nearby channels. Um, we will have the ability to adjust the antenna pattern to match that. So you'll see here, this is a little animation showing kind of how it does it. Um, we have over 700 different antenna patterns that we can choose from. Um, and it does it in essentially real time. And unlike a lot of things like beamforming and some of the other technologies out there, it works with any client device. It doesn't require anything special from your Wi-Fi client. And it also doesn't require your Wi-Fi client to be stationary. It works with mobile users as they walk around and move through the coverage area. So one of the big benefits here comes into dealing with interference from other APs. So we can optimize the antenna pattern to ignore other APs, allowing two APs in the same general vicinity to broadcast simultaneously on the same channel without causing interference with each other. With a traditional standard access point antenna, in this situation, you would get performance degradation due to the interference. So I'm gonna go through a case study that we did. This is a hospitality scenario. So this is two different floors of a hotel. Um, and we are putting one low powered AP in each room, which has now become one of the most standard ways of doing hospitality coverage. Um, and we took two products here to test this. We took our now end of life NWA, uh, what is it? 1302, which has smart antenna. And we took a ubiquity which is the same form factor, same basic Wi-Fi specs, but doesn't have smart antenna technology and then compared them. So in our scenario, we have access points and we're gonna test here with using channel 100. So you can see on the same floor, they are not directly next to each other. And then there is one on the other floor. Um, so what we did first is we only enabled one of these APs and we did an aggregate throughput test to see what's the maximum bandwidth you can get through these APs. So you can see here between us and Ubiquity with just one AP, the performance was basically the same. Ubiquity was even a, you know, slightly faster than us. Um, both of us had essentially 67% utilization of the airtime that's available. So that's the theoretical maximum amount of time devices can be spent transmitting. Um, so first question maybe, well, why isn't that 100? And, and part of that is because this test was done with 11AC products. Um, and 11AC and all of your older technology products are very, um, how should I put this? Um, there, there's a lot of issues with how it comes to allocating um, airtime between devices. So with Wi-Fi in general, um, one device can broadcast at a time. But the method that you coordinate that is simply that devices listen to see if they can hear anybody else broadcasting. And if they can't, then they take their turn. Uh, but you run into issues where first off, that's sort of inefficient. Um, 
uh, because if you see someone else broadcasting, you then wait a random amount of time. So there may be a large gap before you start broadcasting yours. There's also things um, out there um, called hidden node problem where the AP can see multiple users, but those users cannot hear each other. So the, the, when they listen, they don't hear the other user that's broadcasting. So these start broadcasting and it causes interference at the AP. So for that and several other reasons, the efficiency generally is not um, that close to 100% in a single AP scenario. Wi-Fi 6 has done a lot to sort of help that. Um, so now we enable the second AP and we redo those tests. And so what you see here is both, both APs or both brands, um, you know, the aggregated throughput across both of those APs increased. But you will notice it increased a lot more with the smart antenna AP. In fact, if you look at channel usage efficiency, we're up to 131% usage efficiency, um, you know, and the, the maximum should be 100. And the reason we can exceed 100% is because the smart antenna is allowing multiple devices to transmit at the same time without interfering with each other. If you look over here at the ubiquity, we got up to 95% channel efficiency, which is really good. And what you should expect to see in a typical uh, multi AP environment. So now we've enabled the third AP. I believe this is the one on the other floor. Um, and again, you will see our aggregated throughput has increased. It's now over 900 megabits. Whereas with Ubiquity, it's essentially the same as where it was. Um, the other thing to note is when you look, the smart antenna APs, the aggregate or the bandwidth for each individual AP is pretty evenly distributed. Each of them are getting right around 300 megabits a piece. If you look over here at the ubiquity, you see there's a lot of, um, of difference between each of these APs, right? One's getting nearly 300 megabits, another one's only getting 80. And that's because they're all basically fighting for this airtime and one of them ends up getting more of that airtime than others. Whereas with smart antenna, because you're able to ignore each other, it's much more evenly uh, distributed. And again, you see channel usage efficiency has gone up with smart antenna. We are now up to 155%. Um, versus, you know, what should be 100% airtime utilization because of this ability to reuse the spectrum. And then you see here, um, Ubiquity, their airtime utilization actually went down due to some of the inefficiencies with 11AC. Now, as I mentioned, Wi-Fi 6 has added some technologies which help solve some of these issues, but they go about it in a different way than smart antenna. They've added things like BSS color coding, TWT, which is uh, the ability to schedule uh, when users broadcast um, to make it more efficient. They've added some other technologies in there which help, but they do it in a different way than smart antenna. So smart antenna um, can be considered to be a complementary technology. So Wi-Fi 6 helps solve some of these issues. Smart antenna helps solve some of these issues in a different way. So you combine them together and you really get a big performance boost. Um, so now we're doing a test here. This is going to be in a clean room environment. So you're not going to see much benefit from the smart antenna, a little bit help with, you know, channeling the beam to where it's going. And we're going to compare the older um, WAC 6303 D-S, which I said that is going away. And we're comparing it to the WAX 630S. Now the client device we are using is a single iPhone 12. Now, an important thing here to keep in mind is the iPhone 12 only supports two spatial streams at a time, whereas the WAC 6303 D-S supports um, on five gigahertz supports three spatial streams and the WAC 630S supports four. So because of that, um, you know, it's, it, you, you would be getting even better performance if you had some sort of uh, device that supported the full four spatial streams. You'd see much more difference here. Um, but you know, we wanted to use a product that's typical off the shelf that does support Wi-Fi 6. And iPhones are probably the most common um, Wi-Fi 6 capable device that you're going to find out in the field hitting your stuff, whether it be an iPhone 12 or whether it be a newer Samsung or Google phone. Um, mobile phones are where you're most likely to see Wi-Fi 6 client devices at this time. It is still, you know, obviously spreading to laptops and tablets and things like that. And some do have it, some don't. It's just not as common as it is on the, the newer modern cell phones. But as you can see, um, as you would expect, um, the, the new product, the WAC 630S, does outperform um, the older product in the, uh, 
five gigahertz spectrum. And you see here an even bigger difference on the 2.4. So why is that? And that's because um, 2.4 radios basically have been stagnant with no improvements in the technology since 11N until Wi-Fi 6. So the WAC 630S is using what's essentially an 11N 2.4 radio, whereas the WAC 630S has a full Wi-Fi 6 um, 2.4 gigahertz radio. So you see there's a much bigger difference in performance between the two, again, using an iPhone 12 that supports two spatial streams. Lastly here, just want to point out that if you are saying to yourself, how do I power this? Um, you know, the, the main switch we recommend is the XS1930-12HP. Um, this is a multi-gig switch um, and it can support the higher PoE powers. Um, it supports 802.3 AT. It also supports BT for the WAC 650S. Um, so this is, this is the switch we recommend for powering these. We do have these PoE switches in stock. Um, so they are there for you. I know a lot of the PoE switches have been back ordered for a long, long time. Um, hopefully we start seeing some of that being solved here in the near future. Um, but you know, China has shut down several of their cities, including some of their factories. So who knows how that's going to affect um, IC supply here coming up in the next few months. But hopefully it'll start getting a little bit better. But this particular switch we have in stock, it supports the full 2.5 gig um, uplink port on the WAC 630S, um, and it has plenty of PoE budget. We also have a PoE injector, the PoE 12-30W. So this is a, if you just need to power an individual device, um, it supports 30 watts of power, so it'll handle the WAC 630S fine. And both ports on it are 2.5 gigs, so there, it will not be throttling the uh, data from the wireless users. Um, as far as the supply on the WAC 630S goes, um, our first shipment, we have sold out of it here in our warehouse. Um, we have sent a lot of stock into distribution. I would think that you can still find it at distribution at this point. Um, you may have to, you know, if one distributor doesn't have it, another may, um, as you guys are probably aware, some distributors stock a lot of our products, some distributors stock very little and try to drop ship everything. Um, we will be getting more of these in in the next couple of weeks here. Um, so, you know, if you, if you place an order now and get it backward with your distributor of choice, these should be getting stock some point in April to be able to fulfill that back order. Um, so that's it for today's presentation. Uh, I've got to always bring up here um, for you that, you know, we do have our YouTube channel, Zycel America channel. Um, most of our webinars are archived there. Um, we also post instructional videos, how to configure certain things, how to use certain apps. Um, so Zycel America channel is the official US um, US channel for networking products. Um, and just because there's a million different Zycel channels on uh, YouTube, unfortunately. And then if you want to link to us on LinkedIn, we are Zycel US channel. But any questions, send them in with the question and answer box. Um, while I'm waiting for questions to come in, because I don't have any, um, you know, be sure to check out forum.zycel.com. This is our user forums put together to help you talk to other users and installers of Zycel equipment. This is also where security alerts, firmware updates, release notes, these all get posted there. And oftentimes this is the first place where those will be posted. These forums are also monitored by both our support and our product management teams. Um, so occasionally they'll wait in to answer questions you may have, but even if they aren't, it's also just a good way to get your um, ideas for improvements, things you'd like to see changed in front of those people and be able to rally um, other users to support you and back up that what you're saying you think would be nice is something other users would think would be nice as well. And then you can always reach out to me directly by my email. It is Sean R. Sean is spelled S-H-A-W-N. And then the letter R is in Romeo. So Sean R at Zycel.com. Um, feel free to hit me up with any questions you don't want to ask publicly, um, et cetera. So Harold just sent in a question, does this product support mesh? So yes, it does support mesh. To use mesh, you must be using either one of our controllers um, or you must be using um, 
cloud. So with Nebula, mesh is free, a part of the cloud. So you must be using one of those two modes. You cannot mesh in standalone. But otherwise, yes, they do support mesh. Um, with, with the uh, Nebula, we have what's called smart mesh. Um, so you can have devices set up and assigned to essentially be your standard AP. And then if for any reason they get unplugged from the ethernet or uh, data stops working on the ethernet, you can set them to automatically switch over to mesh mode, um, assuming that at least somewhere on the, around that area, one of the APs still has a working ethernet connection so they can mesh together and find each other. So uh, Martin is asking, is it safe to assume that all Zycel Nebula AP devices can be used as standalone or managed by ATP USG controllers? No, it is not. Um, so when it comes to our business class AP, so um, you want to look for access points that start with the number, well, it used to be easy. I used to be able to say it starts with five or six, but we've recently launched our low end 50AX and 55AX. So let's change it to, it needs to be an AP that has at least three digits in the number and starts with five and six. So anything that is, you know, WAC 510D, um, WAC 6503D-S, WAC 6553, et cetera, something like that, those all support what's called Nebula Flex Pro. And if they support Nebula Flex Pro, they can be managed by the controller that's built in on the security products. Um, the access points below that um, cannot. So if there's only two numbers in the, in the uh, model name, cannot be managed with a controller. If there are three or more numbers, but those numbers start with one or two, cannot be managed with a controller. It must be those that are three or more digits starting with five or six. Um, Harold's asking, how does the range compare to older AC APs? As I showed there, you know, I, I, we, we did the uh, performance comparison um, with the uh, WAC 6303, which is an AC, which is this is essentially replacing. Um, and as you see, the, the speeds are better and the coverage range is essentially the same. Um, you aren't going to see that much difference, or you shouldn't expect to see any difference really between Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. Um, it, it's the same RF frequencies going the same distance, and, um, you know, APs are smart enough as the signal gets worse to drop the speeds down and stuff like that. So ranges are essentially comparable. You just look at the power rating and the, uh, the sensitivity, and it's basically the same. Now, where things get a little bit weird is with Wi-Fi 6E products, which we currently have not launched. Um, Wi-Fi 6E enables the use of a new frequency called, which is six gigahertz. Um, and in general, as frequency goes up, range goes down. So this new six gigahertz frequency is going to have less range than five gigahertz or 2.4. So, um, you know, once we get around to launching our own Wi-Fi 6E products, it's gonna be something to keep in mind is Wi-Fi 6E is going to have, in some cases, pretty significantly um, less range. Um, Harold is also asking about spatial streams. So Harold, um, I do a Wi-Fi 101 uh, webinar where I sort of go through all the different Wi-Fi technologies. Um, so it sounds like that may be a good one for you, um, but I'll go ahead and do it as, as best I can here. Um, so in general with Wi-Fi or any sort of radio device, only one device can transmit at a time um, on the same channel or frequency. Um, so they all take turns. Um, what we found though is um, there's this thing that we the, that used to plague Wi-Fi devices in the 11 B G and A days um, called multipath. Basically, as the antenna broadcasts a signal, it radiates out, and it can reflect off of different surfaces. So, um, as and I, again, that Wi-Fi 101, I've got some slides with diagrams to make this a little bit easier to understand. But um, basically that signal will go directly from the AP, for instance, to the client device it's talking to. But that signal isn't shot out in a straight line, it's shot out generally as a circle. So it may go over, hit a wall, and then bounce off that wall and reflect over to where your client device is. So because of that, you get what is essentially an echo type effect. So with, with, uh, starting with um, 11N um, and ever since then, 
we've taken this uh, thing that this echo effect that we call multipath, and we've turned it into a benefit. Our technology has gotten to the point where we can differentiate these different echoes. So what we can do is we can simultaneously transmit one stream of data on one antenna and a different stream of data on a different antenna and take advantage of the fact that there are gonna be paths that are timed differently because they are physically separate and be able to, to, what would normally be interfering with each other, be able to differentiate those. So spatial streams are how many of those different streams of data your device has the ability to A, transmit or B, receive. So that's why when we were looking at these APs, it would say three by three or four by four or two by two. The first number is how many spatial streams the device can transmit. The second number is how many spatial streams um, the device can receive. So with access points, it's generally the same on the radio. If, if it transmits three, it can receive three. If it transmits four, it can receive four. But when you look at client devices, especially cheaper mobile devices, what you will find is they may be able to receive three spatial streams, but they only have the capacity to be able to, to um, use one spatial stream to transmit back. So you'll see something like one by two or one by three or two by four, things like that, because it's as asymmetrical when it comes to your client devices. So I, I hope that helped, um, helped explain sort of what spatial streams are. But um, to go back to um, 11N 2.4, um, 11N standard allows you to transmit 150 megabits per second. By adding spatial streams in, let's say you have two spatial streams, you can send two different 150 megabit streams of data at the same time. And then your client device can combine those together to get 300 megabits. So if you see a device advertised for consumers as N300, that means it supports two spatial streams. If you saw something that said N450, that means it supports three spatial streams because 11N spatial streams are only 150 megabits. And it's the same, same thing with 11AC and, and the, the Wi-Fi 6. It's just the amount of data that can be transmitted per spatial stream um, has been increased. And then also um, with some of the newer stuff, um, with 11AC, we added the ability that your AP, your router can transmit, um, instead of you know all spatial streams going to one user, you can use different spatial streams for different users, allowing you to transmit data to multiple users simultaneously, although you know it's, it's gonna be at a lower rate for each. Um, and then with Wi-Fi 6, we've added the ability for multiple users to transmit data back to the AP. So you now have the ability to send multiple spatial streams from the AP to users and be able to hear multiple spatial streams back at the same time with Wi-Fi 6. So hope that answers that. But if not, keep an eye out for my next Wi-Fi 101 webinar. We go through this in a lot more and I've got visuals that I can show you, um, which may help you know make comprehending some of this a little bit easier. Um, I am not seeing any other questions. I'll hang around here for just another second, but if you're writing something out that's long, um, you may want to write down my email and just uh, email it to me and I'll answer you offline. Or you can always reach out to your salesperson, um, Jacob, Andy, or David, or try for a few of you, um, you know, and they can always forward the questions to me. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for turning out today. I appreciate you coming out and giving me time today. Um, we've, we've got a lot more webinars coming, so take a look at some of those and see what else may interest you. Um, Harold is asking, is the 101, so yeah, some of my older 101s are on YouTube. So if you go to that Zycel America channel, um, they will turn up there. Um, I think they sort of play with the names to try to make them more appealing. So I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but if you go to our channel and browse through, um, it shouldn't take you too long to find, find one of them. And I am going to go ahead and end the webinar. Again, feel free to reach out to me via email if you have any additional questions or reach out to your salesperson. Thanks, guys.